Wiring Pi allows one to use Arduino type programming with the Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins. Here I'll explore how this is used and how it differs from Arduino. Developed by Gordon Henderson, to me this is really a game changer for Raspberry Pi as it can now become sort of a super Arduino. Particularly if you want to use your general user interface or come up with fancy boxes with buttons and so forth. I'll sort of demonstrate that in a later video in this series. Here I'll connect the Raspberry Pi to an LED which I will program to blink. Wiring Pi, by the way, comes native to the newest version of Raspbian. If you're back to older versions of uh, Raspbian or whatever Debian-based distribution you're using, you're going to have to install it, which I won't go into. Go get the newest version of Raspbian. I've tested this, and it works on Raspberry Pi 2 and 3. I'm sure it's going to work on one. These programs are going to be written in C and have to be compiled, built, to create an executable. The easiest way to do C programming, and now we're talking about real C programming, not the pseudo C programming we're used to in Arduino, I would get the Gini text editor under Linux. This works on Raspberry Pi or a full Linux distribution. I use it on both. To get it, you would go sudo apt-get install gini-plugins. It would get all, everything you need and download automatically. As I said, Wiring Pi was developed by Gordon Henderson. Thank you, Gordon. This is really a game changer for all of us. In addition, I'll later on show you how to use these executable files, which you will write, to do certain functions such as controlling hardware, etc. And you can read the output from these programs through Python and then use Python to do all your fancy display work and so forth. Let's take a quick look back at the uh, Raspberry Pi's GPIO header setup. This, of course, was a picture of the one for the two and the three. And Raspberry Pi 1 would only include it down to here. Nonetheless, when you are using wiring Pi, you can address these pins directly, such as 1 and 0, 16, 15. You would address it as digital write 1 high, for example. So that's this really makes it easy. It works through all the pins. I tested it up through 29. Pictured here off on our left is our little test program. This is really going to have to be written as a proper C program. You're going to have to include the library wiringpi.h and standard library and standard I.O. is used for other functions such as displaying this message. Unlike what you saw in Arduino, you do not have a setup and then you go to main or loop. There is no loop. You have main and you have to have a return integer. You try, you try programming this or setting this up like you did in uh, Arduino, the compiler will kick it. Won't work. So you have to have an integer return main. Here's your opening bracket. Here's your closing bracket. Now, first thing I'm going to do with this simple little program is I'm going to display a message. Raspberry Pi blink. You will see that on the terminal that will be open as I'm running it under Gini. You'll see that while the uh, LED will be blinking. The first thing we got to do next is we've got to initiate the wiring pi setup, which will return an integer value. If it returns a negative one, that means something's wrong and it failed. You might be 
not in root, and you got to be in root for this to run, or it won't, or you're just going to, or it's just going to, even if it compiles, it still won't run. And I would exit with a one, which would tell me something messed up. Otherwise, here's your pin mode command, LED pin, which I arbitrarily left it at 25, but defined it as 25. LED pin would be programmed as an output. This is simply a while loop that just keeps repeating. Delay 100 milliseconds, you write 0 to the LED pin, delay 100 milliseconds, write 1 to the D LED pin, and it will just blink on and off and it will go forever until I close out the terminal or some other way to program it. To finish all of your C programs, you also need this statement, return zero. Unless you're in a loop like this, the program will just go ahead and uh, exit from the program. Unless you're stuck in a loop, of course, it will, it will return a value zero, which tells you the program worked properly. This is how the program looked on Gini as I was programming it in, in the Raspberry Pi. Of course, when you're doing a C program, you can do it from a terminal or something else if you want to, but that makes no sense. This is a lot easier. I made a separate video on how to set up and use Gini for um, compiling C programs, but the sequence is this. You type in your code. You'll hit compile. There'll be a message down here at the bottom if you can see it that tells you, yeah, it worked. Then you got to build it. And then it creates an executable in a file called root slash root slash work. Nonetheless, when you hit execute, the program will execute and do the following. Once you press execute, you'll get what you see here. It will open a, a terminal window. I always use LX terminal for a lot of reasons. And like I said in the other video on using Gini, shows you how to make sure it's LX terminal. What you will get is this terminal program will open and you'll see Raspberry Pi Blink LED. That's the message you see here in blue. That's from the print file statement. And that's pretty well all it does. The LED, which which you will see in the which you saw either previous or following this, it simply blinks on and off. Note that if I was to comment out the, the delay routines here, it's been reported that the output pin, whichever one I'm using, toggles on at over 10 on and off at over 10 megahertz. That gives you the kind idea of the speed involved here. If you tried this with Python, you're lucky to get a few hundred hertz. Now you're talking about switching speeds of millions of cycles a second. So nonetheless, that's all there is to this. You'll get this message, and when I um, close, if I was to close out the terminal, the LED would stop blinking, and we would be back to if we want to compile it, change it, or whatever. So, this is a brief introduction to using Wiring Pi with the Raspberry Pi to give you Arduino-like instructions. Uh, visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. And as you see, the LED is now blinking, as per the program that we had earlier.